cheese, you could say. I know this deadlift scrap especially has been a thing in TMM at least. We saw it yesterday by, by Pine being ran, and to say the least, it did not work out whatsoever, but a lot of people would tell you that was maybe a little bit of execution flaws, so uh, I'm still curious to kind of see it, you know, and with the execution on point, but not going to yep. see it here. Uh, it like looks more standard here. Uh, slap begging too strong here. Yeah. Looks like an offlane Moy Beast and the jungle Sulfurus as it is right now. But of course, Sulfurus can always be farming, mid, whatever you want. But I haven't seen Haxman play it yet. But uh, So probably mid or in the jungle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that same will time. be Sulfurus. Yeah. At the same time, looking over the bands, it seems that Nikkei also didn't want to face the Ophelia. He probably watched the last series here to pick up on everything he could. Uh, and uh, takes that out as well as Tempest. And the slap at the same time removes the deadlift. Uh, that's also what I noticed from you know Tyreek playing the Blitz and then someone else playing the deadlift and then they man up and it's almost unbeatable. Of course, that was the old deadlift, but uh, yeah. yeah. He still, he still potentially could do that. I, think, I mean, the death grip did get nerfed a little bit in some ways, but I think if you actually still wanted to run him like that, I, honestly, I still think he could. It's just maybe not as powerful. I, his resurrection is actually really interesting now, too, isn't it? With that, it's like has the charges here, so yeah. I don't know. Um, it's a charge for me. Yep, that's true. Yeah. Rhapsody coming out now. I, you know, honestly, I was looking at the picks here. I thought for sure something like the parasite could have been a very obvious pickup for them, but uh, they they pass it up for now. And so they go the rhapsody route. So we'll see. I, and I don't think they're going to get a chance to pick up Parasite. In fact, I'm pretty sure Sync would ban it here. So, I think they mostly pick it for the defensive mechanism of the ultimate. I think uh, it's not like they want to push with the heal or uh, have a strong laning presence. I, I guess it brings that to the table too, but uh, it, it it's probably mostly to for the team fight ultimate there. Mm -hmm. So now Sync going to think about what they want to do for their third pick. <coughs> a bit of time being used here between the two teams. Um, Going to run with the Magmus in the end. Yeah, I was about to say, they need some kind of team fight stance here. Uh, it's definitely something they have to get. Midas, also if they let them get Midas Magmus on top of something like a Tundra bird, I mean, that's very deadly to, fame, to play against. And it can be. So Lord Self Forest, if I had to guess, I would think it's going to be a, a jungle Self Forest here with Slapped and yeah. I think Warby Suicide now. So if your hex got to think about what you want to do here as far as the picks, you know, maybe not wanting to pick heal heavy. That's where the Rhapsody is also a little interesting. I know you mentioned he's probably not going to be pushing more, maybe the defensive mechanism in the end, but his heals, I, I guess that's not really something you're thinking about, though, you know, with the Lord Self Force ultimate. It's like, oh, my Disco Inferno is going to be stopped now on one target. So it's not really <laughs> yeah. a big deal. No, there. no, it's mostly like, as I mentioned earlier, like the first game of the day here with Ophelia Rhapsody, that's a strong combo with the heal you put up when you hit the tower, and then you can just push and you have an Astro on top. It's just very hard to deal with if you can't burst down the creeps uh, in time. Let's see, Puppet Master into Silhouette so far. Both teams could use definitely use a carry here, so I wouldn't be surprised to see plenty of those. Again, I'm still looking for the Parasite ban from Zlab, possibly. There's a Dark Lady now even throwing out, so may have to resort to a couple of second tier carries this game, it looks it's looking like here. <laughs> like Salomon. Salomon, yeah. Yeah, just experience that with Formless there. <laughs> yep, doesn't want to go through that again. Yeah. That was pretty impressive, though. I mean, that was almost a 600 GPM silhouette that just got struck, so. Yeah. Yeah, that, it, it really is something, yeah. I mean, that can happen. But, man, I, I, see, part of me is like, maybe it is that that mock is, is actually really strong. Enough, but Formless has done that before, like we were talking about. It's not like that's the first time we've seen that with him. So, in fact, he's had yeah. better games on Salomon technically as far as stats go. So, But, uh, yeah, that, that mock change, I mean, no doubt, it, it does provide a bit, too. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. And that's, uh, you know, 40 damage per second at least. Yeah. And top of the auto attacks. So, Doctor and a Mage Bane, so yeah, pretty carry heavy all around. So, Parasite was not banned, so again, I think if you're Hex it here, it, yeah. it's with a Tundra it's, it's an synergy. Option. Uh, but then it's, yeah, you could 
but at the same time you have Y B Salafarius. Those are pretty tanky heroes. I'm not sure if Parasite Burst is enough to get those down on top of a, a Magma or a Midas combo or something. Huh. Oh. It's interesting how that just went right there. <laughs> the pearl, yeah. yeah. It can essentially also work if Paris, if Midas is trying to combo someone, you can pop that ulti up, kind of like a Rhapsody. Mitigate that, but it's also just a nuisance to deal with, because you have to walk into that ulti. It's going to be a bit interesting. Uh, at the same time, Salfaris and Woiby are heroes that usually chase a lot, and they just want to man up and go, go full ham. But uh, that might, then that's where Pearl ulti is probably not. I guess you can stop initial burst, and then that's kind of it. Yeah, and then they even go Madman on top of that to finish it off, actually, for uh, for Hex right here. So going to be running the short lane Madman, and oof, there we go with the Arachna to finish it. So it's going to be Hex running on that Arachna here. Definitely yep. like that pick against a Madman, I would assume. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's definitely a viable option. You put that spider sting on him, and then he, he really can't move around as he wants to. Yeah. Madman is really benefiting from high mobility. So if you take that away, he's going to be easy to kill. Yeah, I wonder if he's going to actually try to go for something like a Null Stone because of that here. A madman. Yeah, that's definitely an option, actually. Um, the question is if he's going to be able to compete with Arachna in terms of damage output during the time span that he gets the Null Stone. That's the initial question. If he's going to short lane farm, Something like a cleaver still. I guess they have a Stolstice to carry with as well. And they have a Midas who also likes to pick up farm and push out waves. Um, so maybe an Allstone and then something like the, a damage item and then a staff, I guess, could be an option. Mm -hmm. But maybe, I mean, he could also pass it up, the Allstone, and then hope that his team is able to initiate onto a Rackman and then he can come in and kill her before she does too much. But then there's the pill factor as well. That can really uh, interfere yeah. with that plan. That's true. Yeah, Pearl pick again. Not it's just kind of been dabbling in here and there. So, yeah. think going the more defensive mind. And I, I love I love the new the new Pearl though. So it is fun to see you know with the purge, uh, the support that she brings that ultimate, and not only just how it knocks everyone back. It's the kind of defense, but the, that heal regen so powerful inside it too, for her teammates. So, um, yeah, you know it's it's actually I'm glad that Zlap kind of brought that up about. Uh, Madman. Now, we actually saw two games of Madman yesterday where he ended up going Staff of the Master pretty quickly, actually. Uh, I don't think it was Hex that we saw that happen. I, I want to say that was LGT, if I'm not mistaken, uh, doing it, actually, in their series against Complexity. So, But uh, we saw the potential of it. It, it, w it was pretty annoying. I mean, <laughs> it w it's yeah. got to be pretty annoying to play against. I think it's pretty strong. Also, if, if they initiate on Madman and he dies, and then he comes back up, the spider thing dies with it, I think. It's not like it's hitting nothing. I don't think so. So he's slowed. Then he could just, he has time to go on Arachna again, where she can't slow him, where she really benefits from that. She can slow down whoever who tries to go on her. Like, she's kind of that anti carry with the spider thing, with the web shot. And uh, if she can't do that and you have enough time for Madman, then after he dies to hit her and kill her, then that's uh, definitely worth it. Of course, they have a try carry over here on uh, Hillborn, so just killing Aragna might not be enough. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, no, that's yeah, that's going to be fun to see if he does go for that. He's kind of confirmed right there with the Hellflower and the interaction, but I guess according to uh, according to this Legion team, they suggest that even if you Hellflower him, it actually still would activate upon death there. So, yeah, you pretty much just have to deal with it. And by deal with it, I mean kind of run as fast as you can away from him. So he is going to, again, be in that short lane here. But, yeah, as we saw yesterday, too, it's going to be because you, you do you need do damage on Madman, too. It's not like you – ideally, you probably don't want to go straight into it because it's not going to give you the uh, most damage output. So but Maybe, as you said before, Nullstone, Shieldbreaker, Staff could be the way to oh, go. Oh, yeah. That could be definitely be something. Then there's only the Magma stun that can kind of stop him. And then Magma has to stun him. And that's the only two-second stun that really is. Mm -hmm. I guess Pearl can push him if, because he doesn't have a Shrunken. But, uh, that's kind of it. Like uh, he, he will be able to chase down uh, Sulphorius or Arachna. Yeah. That's interesting. Sipper is going to get the pull off, it seems like. Let's see here with Rhapsody. She's trying to make a play here. But Pearl actually... 
Valentur kind of distracted here, and the Hellhound is going to successfully go to pull all the way. So Rhapsody of Pearl continuing to trade auto attacks until uh, they finally go away from one another. But either side is losing a bit of life right there. They'll end up in the middle lane, though, together, where it ends up being a two versus two, actually. Uh, apparently, if yeah. Midas Rhapsody versus the Pearl Magnus here. So, Pearl's an interesting support in a lane, especially for a kill potential. You know, she's not really the strongest at it, but I mean, she can she can deal. I mean, the asphyxiate can actually assist a bit. So, if if someone steps a bit out of position, uh, I mean, they definitely have some damage there. Especially like right now, they're kind of low, but they need to go on Rhapsody. Uh, Midas can always elemental warp away. Uh, in case of any danger, and Phil can't really stop that. So uh, definitely, as soon as Midas, when Midas hits level four, I would give the advantage to Legion. Uh, also, they have the dual ranged against uh, Emily. I mean, they should be able to out harass here. Yeah, that world bubble. You do got to be a little careful on if you obviously want to try to kill with it, but it is great for defensive purpose at the same time. Nice job with the counter ward, by the way. Look at that. He, Serenia noticed that tire. Tire. I'm gonna call him Tar. Anyways, the <laughs> Rhapsody player, uh, he was over here earlier and figured, why the hell would he be over here? Well, that's probably why, so good job picking up on that and effectively yep. countering it. Zibi again, here goes another pull with the Hellhounds. Yeah, if you let him do this, I mean, this is he does this so well. and He's going to get the Devils and eventually the farm from that, uh, and he's going to nerf the farm of Madman as much as possible. Hey, see, Solstice he manages. doesn't even care. He kind of just like, you know what? Let it go. Yeah. I mean, he could have pulled them onto the Stealth Hunters, I guess, yeah. Yeah, just kind of having them deal with it another way, I guess. And that being Madman. Oh, tries to pull to the pull camp there, but there's no creeps, unfortunately. So he's just instead yeah. going to have to pull it to now this next creep wave. Now Sip and pulled them over here. And that's where Madman loses the wave entirely. So. Uh, of course, Void Beast loses one too down here, but he's an offlane Void Beast. He doesn't mind to do that, and eventually he will get the levels that he needs to start farming out uh, the Hillborn side here, especially if he manages to get the tier one down here. That's the strength of Void Beast. If he can do this, all top lane doesn't look yeah. good for Legion. They've been up here for a while. Rhapsody, though, wow, that battle cry on Arachna, man, <laughs> that was a lot yeah. of damage. All of a sudden, and she just precision. melted right there. Yeah, with the precision, and Tundra's going to go down too. As Lord South Forest is able to chase him down. So, you know, I was watching a little bit of that. They they were up here for a bit, kind of scouting out, but clearly that kind of backfires on them. Mm, did they expect some forest to be low? Maybe, but yeah, that's sometimes possible. he. There are some some forests they go for a, a chalice first item instead, and if you do that, you might be able to farm a bit faster. But you're also re very low when you farm the jungle. Uh, until you start getting a bottle or something to heal up with. Uh, and I think that might have been what they went for. That, okay, he's going Chalice right now. He's about 200 HP. I forget that, what, that might be what they fought. Uh, now he has a bottle instead, and he's just full HP. And that did not work out at, at all. Yeah, so Hex caught uh, with their hand in the cookie jar there, of trying to find a free kill. And fortunately, found kills on them in response, including the Bloodlust kill. As we saw, so Lord South Forest, he also got kill credit there as well as the assist. So, and South Forest, as we know, is definitely potential to just kind of start snowballing a bit, especially in the jungle. So far, you know, not going too crazy, but we're only four and a half minutes in top lane. Tundra could be in trouble here. Pearl's coming in with a veiled rot. You see Arachna charging up. She's not level six yet. She was getting close actually, but she's gonna say, you know what, we can make a play here. He's gonna come in. Pearl off to the side. There's the asphyxiate. Slowing him down, the web shot's doing work as well, and Battlecry's not up currently, but it just doesn't matter anyways. He's a couple more auto attacks, and gets the kill. So yeah, Tundra, he, I guess not much more he could have done there. That no. way. What he wants to do is TP out, but Pearl can, of course, cancel that with the W uh, uh, to push him away. So yeah, if Pearl wasn't there, he would have lived, but that was not the case. So he has to be very careful up here. Uh, he has a void, so he should, with the bird, be able to stay fine or be fine up here. Uh, let's see if he can manage to do that now. Of course, now level Ragnar is level 6, so he has to be quick on that TP yep. if he finds himself in a bad spot. Yeah, I mean, we saw earlier, with the battle cry, especially in that percent, like, you will actually... I don't even know what the TP, if that'll work, especially with the spider sting on you, so... You gotta yeah. use it immediately, if anything, to give yourself the best chance. You see there, he's 
second it goes up. But yeah, that, that's where the Serenia play of the Veiled Rock is, was very good as well. They're the using that. So oh, he used Veiled Rock? Yeah, okay. he used Veiled Rock. So yeah, there was no chance that he was going to be seen. All right. Tundra. Good. We'll play from him then, uh, securing that, setting that up. Yeah. I would like to see uh, Rashley go mid and then stun the Magmas and then have a Midas combo. And even bring the Solstice because they need to get something going. Uh, they're, they're a lot behind here in Golden Experience, considering it's six minutes into the game. So if they can get the kill on some Magmas at least, I mean, that might get start something good for them here. Yeah, Magmas bottling up a regen rune and coming back to the middle here. Solstice in the meantime, look at this triple stack that he's doing here. Actually, uh, King Nick, yeah, yeah, he's farming pretty well. 300 gold per minute. And Madman and Midas are all pretty much equivalent here as far as where they stand in the GPM chart. Yeah. Uh, fairly well. Madman making do with this constant pull of Warbeast. <laughs> oh, top lane. Tundra, yeah. He is dead. We're all being there. Solstice coming in with a counter, though. Is going to charge onto Arachna. Set up to turn kill the quick ultimate. It is going to be enough damage, but at what cost here? Solstice is definitely dead. He knows that he says he might as well do as much damage as possible. Helps to kill Pearl in response, so it ends up being a two for two. I don't know if Slap's going to be able to do enough damage to Midas here. In fact, yeah, he might want to fall back as TP is coming in from Tundra. So, Ooh, nice nuke right there. Can he land a transmute? Yes, he can. Tundra's running in now. He charges through. He has a piercing shards. It's not going to be enough damage, though. But Midas, another nuke in one second. No, he's not even going to get the chance to go for it. So it ends up being a two for two here. But killing Arachna pretty good for the Legion side. Yeah, uh, Mika is flanking here. He just killed him after the mid here. Not really sure what he's expecting from this. Oh, okay. That's well, a mistake for Midas. Oh, no, yeah. Yelmets. Yeah, but he oh. gets a transmute off. Mistake, you say? Okay. Nah, he okay. gets a counter kill out of it. <laughs> oh. That so that was well put by both sides, to be fair. Mickey, that was good timing on his part, but actually just a better response. I fought response. the same as Mickey there. I fought the same as Mickey, that he was going to get that ulti off, and that was a short kill. But yeah. the W from uh, Midas was fast enough for <laughs> for that to not work out. So actually, a good play for Midas, and uh, Mickey didn't uh, really... He hasn't played for a while, too, so wasn't sure how that was would work out, but now he knows. Yeah. That was fun to see there, but yeah, with that finish of it too, you know, Hex got to be feeling fairly good about that. But again, the big picture right now, it is Sinky Sports, 2,600 goal lead, 2,000 experience lead here. Only eight minutes into the game, but, uh, you know, Madman's actually only third on the team. Not that he's doing that bad, 320 goal per minute, but I guess Solstice and uh, Midas are happen to do pretty well. So Solstice, a, a interesting jungle hero. He definitely has a plethora of choices I feel like he could go with items. Looks like he might be going puzzle box here. What, what would you think? Uh, I don't think he's going puzzle though. I mean, Webby's can run away and uh, I don't think that's going to be the strongest item. I'm not really sure. It might be an ice brand, I yeah, guess, I but guess I wouldn't be, really yeah. agree with that. What else do you build from that? You don't go for a basher or something. Bloodborne more, I don't think so, but <laughs> uh, it might be an ice brand and it's something like a frostbolt scout. I it, Definitely don't hope it's a boss box. Okay. Yeah, Bloodburn Mob, a little too early for same, that. But yeah, At the same time, I don't agree with uh, an Ice Brand. I don't think that item does enough for its cost at this point in the game. So, something like an Armlet is definitely better for damage. Or an Insanitary, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so no matter what he gets here from that bolstering Armband, it sounds like yeah, might not be a huge fan of, but. We'll see which of the uh, poisons he's going to choose here as he's going to port somewhere. The top lane, it looks like. Uh, there is a bit of a creep lane push coming in with Arachna and Pearl. So going to try to... Yeah. Oh, he's setting up. Oh, we can set that up. There we go. We just need his team. There's the Lunar Judgment. TP's coming in. Gets the fear off. Can they get here in time? Pearl, the quick ultimate. Minus. Nice job with the push, but it's not going to matter. It is nighttime now as Solstice charges in. And of course, gets the kill onto her. So nice setup there from Solstice. Yeah, good ultimate from uh, from Polo. At the same time, making sure that he could not reach Arachna, because I'm pretty sure he wanted to charge Arachna. That's the kill they want, but uh, they have to settle for Pill. Good setup though. Good heads up, teeping up there before uh, the wave reaches the tower and hiding. And uh, nice play. You see the middle lane here is back to Magmus versus the Midas and. Magmus, uh, well, they're very even, actually, both around that 350 gold per minute mark. 
Magnus, 1430 gold saved up. So getting close to that portal key, as is Midas, though. He's got 1500 or so. So around the same, as uh, mentioned there. Madman does have a mana tube here. So I'm guessing towards the sustainer, and then eventually yeah. the uh, Nullstone, as we're talking about. Yeah, I think that's okay. Then he needs a damage item, then something, either the staff or a shrunken head. Uh, shrunken head would probably allow him to just hit and not die at all. Uh, if he manages to get it off, so there's some valid option for that instead of staff. But uh, staff might be better in terms of securing to get your damage out. It's just so fun to watch too. Just, yeah. yeah, and it's fun, <laughs> of course. It's a new item; you have to get it. It's yeah. like, yeah, it's fun for us, but again, I, I understand that's very annoying to play against. I'm sure, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty entertaining yeah. to see this man with no health bar just go around and still do damage. So. Yeah, that's uh, and the way they were talking about it in the pre-chat too. It's like Slap's pretty much expecting it himself. He's like, "Can can I do this against it? Oh no, okay." Kind of just have to accept it. So, yeah, it seems like if you do happen to pick up Madman, then that's gonna be almost part of a core now, as far as the build. I mentioned that Nullstone Shield Breaker, Staff of the Master, could be a nice trio of items there. So, um, yeah, Whispering Helm on Arachna, coming out here with the Steam yeah. Boots. Going a different route this game. It's more the farming route. He went straight to route in last time. Uh, but Sulfurus is farming the entire jungle. Uh, it's, there's not much left for Ragnar. Yeah. <coughs> not much over there to farm with. He's speaking of South Forest, 400 plus gold per minute. And actually, they're going to turn to the top lane. Oh, he started running in, but Arachna decided it was best to not go. I don't know if they saw somebody else at the last second, but something threw them off. Yeah, there's three heals up here for Legion. Even Madman's here joining the fight, but there's a wave from Serenia. I think every time you do this, you go offensive. You need to make just have at least one counter wave, so you minimize the chance of them seeing you. And now Madman is just sitting here instead of being bottom farming. That makes up space for Warbies to even counter lane void and to start pushing down here. Mm -hmm. That's not what you want. Yeah, he is taking advantage of it. He's got a big creep wave coming. With the Hellhounds and himself, of course, that level four battle cry that he has now. Top lane, no, I thought they were going for some reason, but never mind. They end up porting back, actually. There is the Ice Brand, by the way, on Solstice. So, yeah, it may not be the most efficient in itself, but I mean, the Frosso Skull, again, we talked about that. It's, it's a good pickup yeah. in most cases, but. It's decent. It's just a bit expensive, I feel like. Yeah. But it, it makes him tanky too, but I don't think Ragnar cares if she hits you uh, seven times or nine or ten. So it, it, either way, I've, I, it's a lot of gold into that item, which might not even be too effective, especially not against white beasts. Uh, it could be against the forest a bit, but not too much. More beasts gonna help collapse on the bottom lane here, perhaps. I don't know if it's gonna. They have enough lockdown. Yeah, they definitely don't. So instead, just gonna try to prevent Madman from countering it here. Kind of pushing that is. Yep. So not the not the most action this game early on is. Oh, did I see that right? Yeah. Interesting portal key on Lord South Forest. That's not a usual pickup. No, nope. definitely isn't. But they don't have that much initiation, so. Him going it is okay, so he can follow up Magmus uh, with the Q and ulti, and I think that's a dead target, whoever he stuns. At least right now. <laughs> Maybe not Solstice, because he bought that Ice Man. Yeah, that's something, seeing a portal on the Sephora's here, but... Uh, slapped. Trust that he's uh, comfortable with what he's doing. In fact, can help the user right here to jump on a Midas. Even though he gets away initially, you know he's dead, obviously. Oh! Wow. That's close. See, I don't even know if that would have actually saved him in the end, though. Well, cause no, I don't think so. It was just it would have delayed the inevitable, I think. Yeah, so that it was almost silly to even try. But, yeah. Well, that's on cooldown now. So, and now it's a matter of seeing saw that or not. Not that it might change anything completely, but, you know, that's on cooldown. As bottom lane, Warbies. Okay, he's going to pop his ultimate. They do not have a stun. Yes, they do. Avalanche comes out, and there's the kill. As soon as the stun happened. That burst was real, so well played from Hex to yeah. catch Zibbe. They get that kill, but it's a guaranteed uh, mid tower. For sure. They used free ultimates for that, I think. Oh, wait. 
mid lane. Lightus, he's going to be able to get away initially. Helps to turn on the Magnus, gets a transmit. Nice job with the Pearl ulti, though. Bubble coming up, mitigating some damage, healing it up a little bit. There we go with the Pearl using the third, the Soothing Presence to heal him as well. And down goes Solstice in turn. So beautiful turn play from Sync Esports. Uh, again, that, that, that's definitely a big power of Pearl. If you do not kill a target right away, she will keep them alive in a lot of ways. Yeah. As she did there, so. Great save from Serenia. Gonna get a nice aggressive ward aside at the top lane too. This top tower is still up actually. It's they are gonna push it here though. No, it's full HP actually, yeah. yeah. But uh it should be down now here. Yeah. I'm not sure what Haxman bought here, if he's going Shroud or into the Firebrand. Oh, it's a Shroud. Okay. There you go. Assassin Shroud coming out for him. So yeah, just wanted to get the whispering out first this game. Dude. The farm a little bit. Legion tower. And there's the top tower kill. So overall, an 8,500 gold lead. A lot of just good farm across the board for Sync Esports. Middle lane Pearl. She is going to be killed here. Yes. Man, if she had any kind of mana, she actually could have lived there. But uh, just was out of mana. So Midas took advantage of that, of course. And gets the free kill as a result. Yep. Bottom. It's a good little pick up for them, but uh, they need some of the bigger heroes if they can find the pick offs. They're going for this way beast into the tower. I think that's a good, good decision. It's probably the easiest kill they can get right now. Well, middle lane actually, they started to go into Midas. He's again a case of he's probably dead right here. Yep. Oh, wow. He is going to go down. So, so Forest doing the work across the map. Rhapsody though, bottom lane. She is going to get caught. Trying to TP out, goes down, but down goes Tundra as well. Double tap, fours left. In credit again, he got the kill in the middle lane too, and he ends up bottom here. So uh, they're all over the place. I guess the portal key is actually coming into play a lot here for Slapped, proving to be the right choice. Yeah, and they're, they're just farming so well on the sink side throughout the entire game compared to uh, Hex here. So they're just out farming them, and as a result, it's really hard for Hex to kill a hero in in time. And uh, as you see, they try to go for kill on on uh, Void Beast, and they just all poured in. And instead of getting one kill, it's they lose two in the process of not getting the Void Beast. And at this point, it's, uh, I'm not really sure what they can do. Every hero on the hill point is very tanky, or either has high mobility. Ragnar's not tanky, but she has this route as it is right now, and the hardened carapace. So it, it's very tough. And Magnus has high mobility. Pull key tablet up right now. Also, very hard target to kill. Let's receive right there. Yep. Nice. Yeah, but a portal key before he gets caught. So, and uh oh, Ragnar's getting caught. She's going to catch somebody. Tundra gonna be that victim right there. Magnus even coming into assist, so you could just you could just feel it here. Sync Esports, they've got the momentum now. They they got it. They got the the pace going for them, and uh, they're they're not showing signs of stopping this. You see top lane poured in from Arachna, and actually Solstice needs to be careful about this. I think Solstice may fall here. Dude, the TP. Oh, well, Magnus being here too. There's no way he's getting out of this. He's gonna have to kind of somewhat find his ground, but. <laughs> Inevitable to die right here, so another kill, and Haxor is now a serial killer, 500 gold, but again, even South Force and Magnus are both basically the same GPM. It's pretty ridiculous how high of GPM they have across the board here. Yep, they're being very effective in farming the map. We saw them clear the, the entire jungle that they have all the time, and Sip is getting a lot bot, and he's farming the enemy jungle as well, a bit. being a bit too uh, aggressive here. I think they're feeling a little bit too comfortable here, but... I mean, even if Slap died there too, it wouldn't have changed that much, in all honesty. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of looked at Zibby and his death spot there, a little, little deep there. But uh, yeah, it's a case of, you know, you, you can suffer a couple of those here. Oh, Madman, by the way. Yeah. Rune Cleaver, um, did not see that coming. Mm -hmm. With the Null Stone being so good of an option here, it felt like. If you can get a lot of farm here and they somehow manage to get a pick off here, a pick off there without losing any heroes in the process, it could be alright here. If he can keep up, keep some farm up, get some farm going, uh, I guess. But at the same time, the, as much as he farms, Sing farms twice as much with all the heroes. Part of me wonders if that was more of a reaction to the game. They, they kind of realize that they're losing a pace here and the Sing's starting to snowball a bit. Maybe he figured that, you know, he needs like the Rune Cleaver for flash farming, or um, this very likely could have been his intentional lawn, though, but 
Um, yeah, it might have been. Yeah. I'm not sure though. Uh, if it was an even game, I would like to see it in Alton Moy, I believe. And then, yeah, into a damage item, into either the Strunken Head or the Staff. Um, I think the Staff is the better choice if you want to guarantee yourself doing damage. But if you want to stay alive, the Shrunken is better. <laughs> Zibbe being so annoying right there. He's using the hell on to snipe a couple of creeps from Madman right there as he's in the jungle. Farming with that rune cleaver. So again, just kind of tiny things like that that just really do add up. And Zibbe doing so good at being a nuisance there. Kind of his job in this game. Post haste picked up by Tundra, or Midas, excuse me. He's got the post haste portal key now. So he's going to be very mobile on the map. In fact, going to try the middle lane again, though. Yeah, it's it's the delay of the cast there. It's just it's too long. Yep. Mickey's too good of a player to get caught by that. They kind of need Tundra to do it, but he doesn't have to blink. And even Tundra has that almost one second animation on it, so Mickey might be fast enough for that too. But Dude. they should be able to catch the boy piece though. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I just saw yeah Ice Brand purchased by Magnus. I mean, he's got a portal key tablet, but I mean, the Frostal Skull, again, it's, it's like it, it really has become a much more popular item now. And oh, he's going to fight Tundra here. There's an e easy kill. I will say that I can guarantee you, if they were not 14k ahead right now, he would not buy uh, an Ice Brand. Okay. <laughs> so, w wouldn't be the usual, but it's one of those. The game's going well enough, kind of ways. Yeah, it's uh, just one of those cases. I want to try this too, kind of thing. Yeah. Solstice did just get his, by the way, but now at the top lane, Midas. Yeah, he's going to go down. Oh, boy. Double tap for Haxorin. I, I just don't think Polymorph's in this game much anymore. I mean, it's you can just feel it again. It's just Sink has really found their groove, and they're just going across the map. And I mean, a Frostless Skull, it's, again, it's like it's 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 good to have that finish for an expensive item, but is that really an item that's going to be like a game changer here on Solstice? It doesn't feel like it. So. No, uh, it's it's not. He's gonna ulti here in the Ragnar, so maybe Tundra can catch up to him. Uh, he's gonna go in. There's the Harden Carapace, of course. He puts some damage out with Tundra. Frostal Skull, they will get the kill. Magnus turned in just a little bit too late, though. South Forest, though, he joins the party. Life jab coming out. Can he get the auto attack off? Oh, he can. Well played with the staccato stunts, and Lord South Forest oh, he barely gets the heal off at the last second, though. Almost take him out. That was very well played, but not enough in the end. He comes back in. Madman actually cleans him up, though. Madman's going to clean up both of them. Gets a double tap. I don't think they realized he was here, as now Serenia is all of a sudden in a fairly bad spot. He will slow down the creeps and run away. Bottom lane in the meantime. Zebe's pushing in the tower, but Pearl, oh my god, the invis, really? <laughs> she happened to get an invis rune, and she's going to survive. Warby's going at it with Midas on the bottom down here, but... Yeah, that's that's a good rune. Yep. Well, it's a free for free. Uh, the stats kind of stay the same though, because of 4B is pushing the bottom tower and pushing some more. He's throwing a bit with Midas here. Uh, I, <laughs> I, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure he's trolling by saying that. But <laughs> hey, the back door? What? The back door? Dude, yeah, I don't know. Oh, uh, I think it's a, yeah. I guess he's printed top for some reason. Uh, Arachna, by the way, oh, she's getting caught middle lane. No. Oh, if she didn't have the shrunken head there, she would have died for sure. Not that much oh step. my god! That's four auto attacks that went full to nothing on Madman. Wow. Yep. That with the battle cry is just so much damage. It yeah, is. It's, uh, yeah. That's what Arachna can do. Yeah, to, to clarify, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's a troll about the, the backdoor. Like, again, it's, there is no rule on backdooring in Han. I, you know, the, every once in a while, I feel like that's kind of brought up, and it's like, no, it's not a thing. It's, you can do it as much as you want. If the, if the designers wanted that to be, like, they would put a mechanic in to prevent it. But It's been a while since uh, <laughs> there's been, like, yeah. that agreement. I think it was, like, back when the game came out, almost. They're like, oh, I don't backdoor. It was like this yeah. unwritten rule that you don't do that. I remember that, yeah. You, you could do it, but it... It was like you don't do it, kind of thing. It, w it was like it was like the rules with like I remember there used to be limits on items too, like sheep stick. Like you can only get like two sheep sticks a game, and it's like arbitrary rules like that. I always found to be like, wh why? Like, what's the point of that? Like, just if if teams farm enough to get more than two sheep sticks, then they should be winning the game. Like, 
shouldn't even be like a discussion. So, but yeah, things like puzzle blocks. Again, the designers found it necessary to, yes, multiple puzzle boxes might have been a little over the top, so they put a limit in with the timers. So, it's true. I remember actually before there was any Dota 2 or Han existed, the back in normal Dota, there was uh, you couldn't buy Restoration Stone in the tournament play. Actually, what? when uh, real games, that was not an option. That was simply too OP that you can use all your abilities twice. But consider it too good. That's hilarious. Yep. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, uh, anyways, speaking of OP, Sinks feeling pretty OP right now. They uh, they're gonna get their top lane pushed in actually. Madman is uh, still going with it. I, you know, he really has stepped up a bit here. You can get in that double tap. He's feeling that. The ring cleaver and everything. But Magnus is going to sit bottom lane. Gets a couple of heroes here. Here's the follow-up now. Oh, Rhapsody protect Melody. It is going to save a little bit of damage, but eventually wearing off there. And the Lord's Out Force looking to chase. Lord's Out Force with a staff, by the way. Uh, the Undying was already used, however. But they do get the racks. Madman does counter push the top lane with the tower. Yeah, but he's TPing back before he has the racks, though. I'm not sure that's the right idea, all right? He should have taken the top racks here, because then it's a one-point racks. Oh, bottom. Well, yeah, I mean, he's coming back in. As In the meantime, though, two teammates fall right off the bat. So, yeah, now Madman's here. He does have a staff for the Master, so that's maybe what he really wanted why he's coming back, but with his teammates dead around him, it's not going to matter. There, there goes the racks, and if you're Sync, you're probably still going to keep going. You still got three and a half minutes on the token. Why not? I mean, in like two, three minutes, they will lose the top. Yeah, no, Midas points up here. He should have just kept going up here on the top racks, and then TP back, because there's a tier two here in the mid and the top, so Sync would not have been able to just rotate to the mid racks. So you could have gotten the racks there for free, and then they could, uh, could have tried to defend the next set of racks, you know, with the yeah. staff. And Full reset. Well, Magnus does TP up there to ultimately defend the melee racks, but here we go in the middle lane. As uh, Madman is going to fight as much as he can, at least. Does get the Untying on him. He is going to die. There's that staff, though. If he gets a killer, refreshes for three seconds. It's not going to happen, though. He's going to die shortly here. For certain. Maybe kill Pearl? No. <laughs> he couldn't get it close enough. And he does go down. Midas also picked up. Obviously, Madman's not buying back. He just got that staff. So this should be another melee rack. As Lord South Force, wow, he healed himself right there because of the staff effect. It was not enough, though. He still goes down, diving a little too far, apparently. War Beast, he too is taking some pressure, but he's going to get back before dying and <coughs> sink again. They're a very comfortable spot. Token still on Haxron. I think game one is all but over here. Yeah, sure. Favorite. It's... Kind of interesting how the staff works on to a madman there, because if you're slowed as you die, you're slowed, you know, the illusion or whatever it is, is still slowed uh, as, as you die. So you're kind of slowed after that, and then that dispels, and then you can't get targeted by anything. So it's actually very important if you kill a madman that he is kind of slowed or anything uh, as he uses the staff effect. Yeah, I wonder if that's that's something that's going to be, like, like we, we stress, I mean, Arachna, even before the staff thing, and it, like Rack is a great hero against a madman. I mean, that, there's just uh, that's just a given. Yeah. So uh, that that final pick of Rack, and no doubt, was very important for that. But that's even more reason, that, as you pointed out, that's the case. I mean, if you spider sting him and then he dies from that, as you said, the spider may stop chasing him, but he would then still be slowed, at least initially, because of that. So interesting, right there. But uh, yeah, sync. Point is, they're victorious, and you know. A little bit of a challenge early on, perhaps, but uh, eventually started to pull away with it. So, yeah, they they really outfarmed them and uh, they got the kills as well. I mean, they kind of outplayed them there in that game. So uh, maybe they can respond with uh, something better here, polymorph than this next game. Scrap deadlift. I'm feeling it. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Busting out the cheese. Oh, we'll see. We'll we'll see what polymorph does here. Now down one nothing against a very good team, of course, and that is Sync Esports. So, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. Game number two going to be coming up next here on Hotcast.